Holy God, again, we pray that these words will reach out to everyone, draw the whole world to yourself, and may all that we do be to your honor and glory. In the name of Christ our Lord, thanks be to God. Amen. When we began our Lenten journey on Ash Wednesday, we asked the question, if the world was ending, how would our relationships change? We never expected we would have a Lent like this one, one where we truly are isolated from people who are part of our community, where we are called to stay inside our homes. And as we come to this table, we recognize that we aren't able to share the bread and the cup. And so on Sunday morning for Palm Sunday, you'll remember in worship, in a ritual action, we poured out the bread and the wine for a time to wait until we can come to the table again together. But what we want to do, since we can't emphasize the Lord's institution of the Last Supper on this Holy Thursday, we focus on another important piece of that gospel. And that is how Jesus and interacted with his disciples and gave them a new mandate to love one another. As Jesus meets with his disciples, he is living into the fulfillment of the scripture that says, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. What did Christ's love look like with those disciples on that Holy Thursday? He was pouring into them all that he wanted them to know. He told them the importance of always abiding, of remembering that they are part of the vine when they stay in Christ's love. He told them that he was going to go and prepare a place for them. And he promised that he was going to send his Holy Spirit, the comforter, so that they would never feel like they were alone. Throughout that night, Jesus was going to go and breathe his Holy Spirit on those disciples. He was going to pray for them that they would live in unity. But in perhaps one of his greatest moments of showing who Jesus was, he got up from the table. He took off his outer robes. And he tied a simple towel around his waist. And he went to those disciples and he knelt down before them. And he washed their feet. Peter didn't want any part of that. Peter said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. Peter knew that Jesus was the Messiah. He had been with him on the mountain at the moment of transfiguration. He had seen Moses and Elijah and the power of God on top of that mountain. And he wanted to remember Jesus in his holiness in that way. But Jesus told him that if you want to have a part in this, you have to let me wash your feet. And Peter said then, not only my feet, Lord, but my whole body. And Jesus has this discourse where he says, well, if, you're, if your body is mostly clean, you only have to wash your feet. But in humility, Jesus took the time to wash each and every one of them. He invited them to be served by him. And it's at that moment when we see the true humility of Jesus Christ. Gail O'Day, a scholar, tells us that in that moment, we see that what God is going to do through Jesus, Jesus is doing through his disciples. And then the disciples themselves have to share fully in Jesus' work by enacting this place where there is true unity and intimacy. Think about who you let touch your feet. 
I know Pastor John doesn't like anybody touching his feet. And sometimes if you go to get a pedicure, you might like to have someone who can be fairly anonymous with you. You don't want to have too much interaction. We're embarrassed by our feet. Our feet carry so much of our pain and they have scabs and warts and fungi and all kinds of things that we don't want to reveal to the world. But it's in this moment of intimacy where Jesus looks at the grime that his disciples have gathered as they've walked from place to place with him, as Jesus washes off all of that dirt, that he serves them. And he calls us to do the same. Because on this night, we get the new mandate that Jesus gives to all of his disciples he says, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. And if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. But I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Brothers and sisters, on this Maundy Thursday, as we share Christ's love with one another, some of us do that in a household where our times of uh, trials have been with us these last weeks. We want to escape from the people in our households, not serve them. If you've had a lot of people in your house like we have, you're like, I don't want to serve anybody else. Get it yourself. Or maybe you've been alone and you felt that isolation. You have felt cut off from all the people in your community. In this time, God calls us to still show Christ's love, to serve one another. And we might have to do that by picking up the phone and calling someone we haven't spoken to in a while, to bring words of encouragement. We might have to shake off the anger that we might have with someone in our house and serve them. This new commandment is one that we have to get creative with in times like this. But it is the very core of who we are as God's people. When we demonstrate Jesus' love, when we go beyond our table and humble ourselves the way Christ humbled himself, that is when the gospel truly lives in us. And that's how we prepare our hearts to face the cross that comes tomorrow. And it's in those moments of discipleship when we share in the fullness of what Jesus has done that we can truly have the joy of the resurrection. So tonight... How can you serve as Christ served? How can you show God's love in a tangible way to someone near or far? How can you live the new mandate to love as Christ loved? Go in peace into this holy weekend until we meet again. Amen.